Lecture 3.8, Derivatives of Inverse Trig Functions. This photo is Lewis and Clark Caverns in Montana, and these are stalagmites, because you might trip over them. Consider the function f of x equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to zero. The derivative df dx equals 2x, and at x equals 2, f of 2 equals 2 squared, or 4, and df dx at 2 is 2 times 2, which is also 4. So the slope is 4, and we can draw the tangent. We can find the inverse function as follows. Start with y equals x squared. Switch x and y. And solve for y. Notice this time I chose to switch x and y first instead of waiting till the end. You get the same answer either way. So f inverse of x equals radical x. There's the graph of y equals radical x. To find the derivative of the inverse function, we have f inverse of x equals 1 half. df inverse dx equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Remember, we bring the exponent down and then decrease it by 1. So df inverse dx equals 1 over 2 radical x. At x equals 4, f inverse of 4 equals radical 2, or 2. So we put 4, 2 on the graph. df inverse dx of 4 equals 1 over 2 radical 4, or 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. So the slope at that point is 1 fourth, and we can draw the tangent. Now we notice something interesting here. At point 2, 4 in the original function, the slope is 4. Now if we switch x and y at point 4, 2 on the inverse function, the slope is 1 fourth, which is the reciprocal. Because x and y are reversed to find the reciprocal function, the following pattern always holds. The derivative formula for inverses, df inverse dx evaluated at x equals f of a equals 1 over df dx evaluated at x equals a. That is the derivative of f inverse of x evaluated at f of a is equal to the reciprocal of the derivative of f of x evaluated at a. A typical problem using this formula might look like this. Given f of 3 equals 5 and df dx at 3 equals 6, find df inverse dx at 5. Now notice what they don't give you here. They don't give you the original function, but we can use the derivative formula for inverses. We 
can see using the formula that the derivative of the inverse evaluated at 5 should be the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function evaluated at 3. So since the derivative of the original function evaluated at 3 is 6, the derivative of the inverse function at 5 turns out to be 1 6. Now we can come up with this answer without actually knowing what the function is. A function has an inverse only if it is 1 to 1. We remember that the graph of a 1 to 1 function passes the horizontal line test as well as the vertical line test. For instance, y equals 1 half x cubed is 1 to 1 because it passes the horizontal line test as well as the vertical line test. y equals 1 half x squared was not 1 to 1 because it fails the horizontal line test. We notice that if a graph fails the horizontal line test, it must have at least one point on the graph where the slope is 0. Now that we know that we can use the derivative to find the slope of a function, this observation leads to the following theorem. Derivatives of inverse functions. If f is differentiable at every point of an interval i and df dx is never zero on i, then f has an inverse and f inverse is differentiable at every point of the interval f of i. Example, does y equal sine x plus 1.1x have an inverse? We find the derivative y prime equals cosine x plus 1.1. Since cosine x plus 1.1 is never 0, y equals sine x plus 1.1x must pass the horizontal line test, so it must have an inverse. The derivative is never 0 because the minimum value of cosine x is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 1.1 is 0.1, which is still greater than 0. There's the function. Notice that the slope is never 0, and so it does pass the horizontal line test. If we look at the graph of y equals sine x and y equals inverse sine x, we see, as expected, that they are symmetrical about the line y equals x. Now we can use implicit differentiation to find a formula for the derivative of inverse sine x. Starting with y equals inverse sine x, we take the sine of both sides. And we remember from Algebra 1, what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side. So in this case, since we took the sine of the left side, we took the sine of the right side, and sine and inverse sine undo each other, leaving just x on the right-hand side. So we have sine y equals x, and we take the derivative of both sides which gives us cosine y dy dx equals 1. So if we solve for dy dx, we get dy dx equals 1 over cosine y. But we remember sine squared y plus cosine squared y equals 1. So cosine squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y. or cosine y equals plus or minus radical 1 minus sine squared y. But y is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. We know that because that's how inverse sine is defined. So cosine y is positive. 
Therefore, cosine y equals radical 1 minus sine squared y. So we can substitute that in. Now you might wonder why we wanted to substitute in a more complicated expression for a simpler one. The reason is there was no way for us to evaluate cosine y, but we know what sine y is. Sine y is x. So dy dx equals 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. We could use the same technique to find the derivative with respect to x of inverse tangent x and inverse secant x. And so we have the derivative with respect to x of inverse sine u is 1 over radical 1 minus u squared du dx. The derivative with respect to x of inverse tangent u is 1 over 1 plus u squared du dx. And the derivative with respect to x of inverse secant u is 1 over absolute value of u radical u squared minus 1 du dx. Notice we have the chain rule built into all of these formulas. Now we know that the inverse cosine of x is equal to pi over 2 minus the inverse sine of x. And we can use that to get derivative with respect to x of inverse cosine u equals negative 1 over radical 1 minus u squared du dx. Inverse cotangent x equals pi over 2 minus inverse tangent x, which gives us derivative with respect to x of inverse cotangent u equals negative 1 over 1 plus u squared du dx. And inverse cosecant x equals pi over 2 minus inverse secant x, which leads to derivative with respect to x of inverse cosecant u equals negative 1 over the absolute value of u radical u squared minus 1 du dx. Your calculator contains all six inverse trig functions. However, it is occasionally still useful to know the following. Inverse secant x equals inverse cosine 1 over x. Inverse cotangent x equals pi over 2 minus inverse tangent x. And inverse cosecant x equals inverse sine 1 over x.